real estate. The median nerve carries a lot of that real estate. And so when you have a nail grinding against your median nerve, that is torture. That is torture. Ever heard the word excruciating? It comes from the word crucifixion. That's where the word comes from. Excruciating is related to crucifixion. They looked at people being crucified and they said, man, that's excruciating. Excruciating, and cruci- excruciating means pain like crucifixion. It's torture. They're wiggling around on a nail going through the median nerve. It is a horrible, horribly painful death. And that's what they wanted. They wanted something that caused maximum pain. It's quite an invention. And here's an example of a nail that was used in crucifixion. As I mentioned, I wasn't exaggerating when I said they looked like railroad spikes. They didn't look like the nail that you get from Home Depot. Now, we don't have, uh, up until 1968, we didn't really have a lot of bodies from people who've been crucified. We had a lot of literature describing crucifixion. That's how we know that it occurred. That's how we know the Bible wasn't as well as both when it described crucifixion. It's described in a lot of literature. So we have lots of descriptions of how horrible crucifixion was. We do. But we don't have a lot of bodies until 1968 uh, when Israeli bulldozers uncovered the bodies of uh, quite a number of people, like about 70 people who died between the years 1 and 70 AD. And the body of most interest to us was the body of a fellow by the name of Johanan. Johanan died by crucifixion. We got his bones. We had his bones. And this is, by, 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 by reconstructing Johanna's skeleton, this is how he was crucified. He was crucified by nails in the wrist. Up until we found Johanna's skeleton, there had been no bones of anybody who had been crucified. And so we didn't know for sure that they got a nail in the wrist. Once they uncovered that body, we could say, aha, the only body we have of anybody who was crucified got the nail in the wrist. We, now, we can now verify that. Outside of the shroud, there was no other evidence of wrist crucifixions. Okay? So now we, we would say it has been verified. Now, Johanan, when they put the nail through his feet, they got creative. Now, when you look at the shroud, the, the, the nail doesn't... Johanan, they were mean to this guy. I mean, I don't know whether they were in a hurry or he, he said something to somebody, he didn't like it, but they took the nail and they drove it through his heel bone. Okay? They put, they put, the, put one foot on the next and they took a piece of wood over it and they drove it through his heel bone. So they, I mean, that, that had hurt like crazy. And here's his heel bowl right there, and it's for that spike, and they went right through, right through. So that, that's, that's what's left of Johanna. And here you see, um, see right there, there's the nail that went through the, the radius, you know, right into the wrist. All right, now with the, the body of the man in the shroud, uh, uh, we see that the nail went right here between the third and fourth metatarsal bone. You see all the blood from the wound, okay, from being nailed to the feet. Here you see the uh, skeleton with the nail going between the, the, um, the third, uh, the, right here, between the, the second and third of the tarsal bone. Now, how do you die from crucifixion? Uh, when I was a kid and I heard about crucifixion, I just presumed that you believe the death because you know, you poke with a big fat nail, you're going to bleed a lot. And so that was the assumption. That's a very wrong assumption. You don't die from exsanguination. You die from asphyxiation. When you just hang with your arms over your head, what happens is as you go above the heart, the perfusion pressure drops. And for each centimeter above the heart, you go the lower the perfusion pressure. If you don't bring those arms down and you leave them up, what happens is you do not have adequate blood to, to provide oxygen and, and nutrients to my, my, my tissues up here. And so I need, why, do you need, why do you need oxygen up here? Well, what, what, what are you going to do with it anyway? One of the reasons that you need oxygen and uh, for those muscles is because when actin and myosin come together, you know, for muscle activity, you know, the actin and myosin filaments, which are part of muscle, in order for them to come apart, you need to uh, activate the calcium pumps. The calcium pumps then suck up the extra calcium, and when they do that, then actin and myosin can relax and come apart again. Now, if you do not have adequate blood, then the actin and myosin, the muscle filaments, come together and they lock in a tetanic position. So that's what lockjaw is. That's what tetanus is. The muscles come together and they bunch up. It's like a cramp. When you go swimming, you get a cramp. That's a tetanic cramp. Now what happens is that when you don't get that perfusion, the muscles in my hand cramp up. And then my forearm cramps up. And then my biceps, triceps, deltoids. And now it's in my chest. It creeps all the way into the chest. You stay with your hands above your head. It creeps into your chest. 
your diaphragm is kind of okay, but your intercostals, your pectorals, okay, your uh, your cervical mastoids, they're paralyzed. They're paralyzed because they're all cramped up. So in order to relieve the paralysis, uh, what you have to do is push up on the nails in your feet. So when you're on the cross, you're going to presume two positions. You're up here, and then what happens is pretty soon, <laughs> you can't breathe out. Okay? So in order to breathe out, push up on the nails in your feet. And when you do that, this happens. See that? Now I bring my hand, arms down here. The heart can come out. I can perfuse these muscles, and I can breathe out. And then, so I can breathe in. My diaphragm's okay. But my accessory respiratory muscles are paralyzed. I have to go up and down and up and down and up and down until I can no longer push up on the nails of my feet. And then you die by asphyxiation. That's how you die from crucifixion. Now when we look at the blood that is flowing from the wrist wound of the man in the shroud, it flows at two distinct angles, at 55 and 65 degrees. See that here? Now, why is that interesting? Well, those correlate to the two positions that the man would assume on the cross. Okay, a real person who's being crucified is going to be there in two positions, the up position and the down position. Every time he moves into a different position, gravity affects the blood flow a different way, and it's going to flow a different direction. And that is precisely what you see in the blood flowing from the wrist of the man in the Again, think about this as a forgery. If this is a forgery, it's interesting that our forger would have known that. The easiest way for a forger to have done this, if it's a forgery, the easiest way is to crucify somebody. Okay, I, I don't see how you get away without doing it. I mean, these goofy methods where they, they take these iron oxide pigments and go through all this elaborate stuff, police, police. The way you do it is to crucify somebody. To get this kind of detail, to get this kind of detail, I'm sorry. Why would you mess around when slaves are available, okay? You know, prisoners are available. There's a lot easier ways to do it than to go through and, and do all these calculations. This requires calculation, literally, because the blood, I mean, come on. This requires some calculation. They aren't goofy angles. They are angles consistent with the flow of gravity for somebody assuming these two positions. 20 degrees difference, not, not 50 degrees, not 60 degrees, 20 degrees. Precisely the kind of difference we expect with the up, down, go down the tree. Okay, that's just a diagram demonstrating those two positions. And again, this is a this is a statue based on the image of the trout, of the man of the trout. And this is, you know, another thing about that too. I mean, you know, um, in in movies and in art, when you see Jesus on the cross, does he ever look like that? How does he look? He's symmetrical. He's always symmetrical. The cross goes in the middle, and the hands are equidistant from side to side, aren't they? It's, it's a, you know, they measure, okay, how many hands they You know, he's always in the middle. This fellow wasn't in the middle. They didn't waste time measuring. They didn't grab one hand that is way out here. The other hand is only a third of the way out. Now, in real life, do you really think you're going to spend a lot of time making sure he's symmetrical? He's going to die either way. They don't care if he's symmetrical or not. It's not neat. And that's another interesting thing about this route. Is that, you know, and that, that's more consistent with real life. They're not going to spend time making sure it's aesthetic, aesthetically pleasing. Come on. In, in the movies and in art, we do that. But in real life, it's not going to be that way. This is dirty. This is, this is like a real life crucifixion here. Now, this is like a side note here, but, you know, I've done this presentations even before Joe Witnesses, okay? Not a whole lot of them, but I have done them, okay? And they want to believe that Jesus, because part of their theology is that Jesus was crucified on a tree, okay, or some kind of pole, because for some obscure verse it says, curse the seed who hangs on a tree. And so they look at that one verse and they see it wasn't a cross, in spite of all the other verses that use the word cross. Okay, all right, look. The blood flow is coming out of this guy's wrist. If this shroud is really the burial cloth of Christ, all right, and the blood flows are what they are, then they're not consistent with the pole, okay? They were out to the side the way I just showed. So kind of put that to rest. <laughs> all right. All right. So then, uh, what is this, another summary slide? Yeah, okay. So think about what, this is it. Think about what our shroud forger would have had to have done. They would have had to have known about the nails going in the wrist, the nail in the wrist as opposed to the palms. 
about the, the level, yes, another thing is that um,